Today I got a Dell Inspiron laptop. I'm going to do a quick uh, clone to a new SSD, install it. I'll show you how I do it. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Um, today I got this older Dell Inspiron 15 laptop. It's an Inspiron 153567. Um, it has the original hard drive in it. It's pretty sluggish, kind of slow. It's got the 7th Gen Core i3 processor in it and only 4 gigabytes of memory. So I'm going to upgrade the memory from 4 gigs to 8 gigs and I'm going to put in a brand new, we're going to clone the hard drive onto a brand new Samsung Evo 870 2.5 inch SATA SSD. I'm going to show you the cloning process. We're going to use the free Samsung data migration software. I'm also going to use this USB to SATA adapter here. You can get these online pretty, pretty inexpens inexpensively. We're just going to plug it right into the drive like that. I'm just going to get going on this, but I'm going to give you a couple of tips. I'm going to plug it into my USB A port. You can also buy these adapters with a USB C if you have that. Um, but before any cloning, uh, a couple of things I recommend is number one, turn off power management. You don't want your computer going into sleep mode while you're in the middle of cloning. Make sure you don't have any outstanding Windows updates in the queue. You don't want it rebooting on you or anything like that. Um, assuming you got a good hard drive. The other thing with these Dells is go into your settings. Go down here to update and security. And scroll down here where it says device encryption. You gotta make sure this is turned off. It was on on this one. I've already turned it off. It does take some time to decrypt the drive, so to speak. Um, but you have to, it won't clone if that is turned on. So make sure you do that, your power management. And if, you, if you're having issues or errors of any kind, you might want to take care of those first. You can go to your command prompt and run a check disk space forward slash uh, R or even an F, but the R is the more thorough uh, disk checking process. Um, if you want to run that, you could also just go right to your C drive. These are just some quick pointers. I'd like to give before you clone, just um, go to the properties of your existing hard drive right here. Go over here on tools. You can run this disk checking process here. It's kind of a basic scan. This is more like the slash F. If you want to do the R, you can do that right from the command prompt as, a, as an administrator. And disable any running programs, as many as you can, that are running in the background here down in your systems tray. I've already kind of taken care of all that on this one. That way you get a you know, better chance of getting a good clean clone. So having said all that, I've already installed the Samsung data migration software right here. I got the shortcut. I have a link down below where you can download it. So I'm just going to double click it and get the program running. Start the clone and I'll come back when it's almost done. I'm going to open this up. We'll install the new drive and hopefully we'll have a good clone and a much faster computer. So this is pretty straightforward. It's asking us to select our target drive, which by default is the Toshiba or whatever. The, in, the internal hard drive is. Target drive, right there's our Samsung Evo 870. Just choose it. And all you got to do is click on start. Just like that. And this is just going to tell you that when it's all done, it'll count down and it'll shut down the computer and, and wait while you install the new drive. So I'm going to click on start. Get this going here. These are a little tricky to open up. Not too bad, the, these particular models. But I'll show you how to do it. I just want to see if we can get this clone going here. <clears throat> Depending on the speed of your processor, how much RAM you got, mainly the speed of your processor is going to really dictate how fast these cloning processes go like this. Normally I would do this outside the computer in my cloning station because um, I can do I can wrap them out in about six, eight minutes. It won't do it quite that quick on this computer, I'm pretty sure. She doesn't have a lot of data on here. But nonetheless, it could take some time. But I'll fast forward this on the video so you don't have to sit here and watch this whole process. Kind of boring. And I'll be back when it's just about done. OK, 
Okay, now it just says the system will shut down and apply the settings in 15 seconds. I'm just going to click on shut down now, speed it up a little bit. Then we can open it up and install the new SSD. All right, guys, I'm going to get set up here to take it apart and I'll show you how to do it. All right, guys, we got our clone finished on our new SSD here. We're going to open it up. Um, first thing I'm going to do is take out the keyboard. There's like five screws underneath the keyboard we have to remove because they go all the way through into the bottom, into the bottom pan here. So we have to get those out. So let's get the keyboard out. I use a thin little tool like this. Oops, don't drop your tools. Actually, before I do that, let me pop the battery out real quick. Safety first. Battery comes right out. And there's a couple screws under here we got to take out in a second. But I like to get the keyboard out first. I'm going to take this, take, you need a real thin, stiff little tool to put in here. There's like one, two, three, four, five little tabs along here. If you look, you'll be able to see them. I like to start right in the middle. That way I can kind of flex it up a little bit. Get my finger under it and it's already popping loose. And then just kind of gently push on the little tabs there. It's pretty simple. Don't go jerking it out because you've got to disconnect your cable. Slides out. And there's a little black lever here that has to be flipped up. I'll turn it here so I can get my fingernail under it. Just be very gentle on those clips. Don't jerk on it real hard because if you break that off, you're kind of up a creek. So we got the keyboard out of the way. And like I said, there's five screws. One, two, three, four, and five. So we'll start right over here. And these are a special length, so you got to make sure you put these screws back where you got them. Taking out most of the screws on the bottom already. I don't want to bore you with that. But I've done these models many, many times. These Inspiron 15s, they require you to do this. These screws do have to come out. I've had people leave me comments in past videos saying, what are you doing that for? You don't have to take those out. And I'm like, well, Yes, you do. So anyway, got all five screws out. So now we'll flip it back over. And this doesn't have an optical drive. That's just a blank. Looks like an optical drive, but it's not. Um, if I let some of these lower end models, there's not even a SATA connector on the motherboard to connect one. So there is a screw in here. And again, that's, that's a real short little screw along with these two for the battery. These, this one, this one, and this one are all one length, very short. But the rest of these screws are all the same. Hopefully I'm not doing, going too quick for you guys. <clears throat> so, got all, all the screws are out. So now I'm gonna flip it back over Carefully open it. There's no screws holding it together, but I'm going to take my little <clears throat> plastic blue triangle sparger tool. Well, actually, my bad. I'm going to do it this way. <clears throat> There's a seam along here. It's pretty obvious. I'm going to just stick my spudger in there. I like these triangle spudgers because they're designed not to go poking in there too far. Because you, like right here, you got speakers right in the front. Don't go sticking something in there and jam a hole in your speaker. Don't want to do that. Oop, let me slide this little blank out here. That's it. Getting ahead of myself. Now there's three little screws over here too. They're very, very tiny. I'm using a number zero Phillips screwdriver with a good quality tip and magnetic. to kind of get a hold of them, but they're very tiny little screws. Got to get those out. So there are a lot of screws to get into these things that you have to remove, as you can see. Get my big fat head in the way. All right, now we got all the screws. <clears throat> so let me get Mr. Spudger. Sometimes these are a little stubborn along the back. By where the hinges are, you can use, like I got these nylon black tools that I like to use where you can get in there and kind of pop it up if, it, if it's stubborn. But just be careful. Don't go just peeling it off because you can break stuff back there. Look at this over here. And you get it popped up there, like a so. And you can see it lifts right off. 
But here's where, here, let's see, this is where these screws go that are underneath the keyboard. One goes here, 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 and here. So you definitely got to take those screws out. All right. Oh, this has already got RAM in it. Well, I guess you won't need that. This does have 8 gigs of RAM in it. I thought it only had 4. No, it's got DDR4, 2, 4 gig 6, so we're golden there. All right, yeah, I was going to add more RAM for it, but she's already got 8 gigs of RAM. She wanted 8 gigs. I thought it had 4. My bad. So here's the hard drive. There's four screws holding the caddy in. There's one here, 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 and here. So we're going to take those out. And don't touch anything. You absolutely don't have to. And like I always say in my videos, make sure you're protected against static electricity, static discharge, using the ESD wristband or something to that effect. See how I just dropped a screw there. But my bench tops, my floors, and my shop are all anti-static, so I don't need to worry about it. Still got to be careful. All right, so now this is going to lift out, but you can see the cable is connected right here to the motherboard. Now, if you flip up that lever, you can just detach it, or if you're real careful, if it's not on there too stiff, you can just pop it off just like that. So now there's four mounting screws holding the drive and the caddy, two on each side. Again, I'm using my number zero Phillips. Number one would probably work too, but either or. As long as you got good good quality tips on your screwdriver, you should be fine. Sorry if I'm going quick, guys. I got several of these I got to get done today. Hope everybody had a good Christmas. By the way, boom. So we don't need Mr. Hard Drive anymore. Now we're going to put our freshly cloned onto Samsung 870 Evo back in the same way. These drives are just a little bit thinner than the one I took out. This has got the older, thicker two and a half inch drive, but just kind of, kind of lift it up a little bit, get the holes to line up. This is the easy part, putting the drive in. It said this is a Dell Inspiron 30, 15 3567. Sorry, I had itchy. All right, so we got it mounted back in our caddy. Just going to plug it back in without disconnecting it from the motherboard there. If you want to disconnect it from the motherboard, that's fine. Just flip up the little lever and slide the cable out and do it that way. But I decided I didn't want to do that. Gonna do everything in reverse now. I'm not gonna completely button it back up until I can get it all booted up, make sure we got a successful clone, so to speak. Especially, seeing how there were so many screws we had to remove to get to the drive. But the ones that I have to, to turn it on. One more screw here, guys. All right, but you can see over here, there's not a there's not a port here on the motherboard for the SATA drive to even hook into. So again, this is a kind of a lower end model. Got your cooling pan, Wi-Fi card, your CMOS battery. Like I said, your speakers are along the front here. Pretty straightforward. Um, all right, so we got that all mounted. Nothing came discombobulated there. Highly technical term, discombobulated. I'm going to snap it back in place. Pretty sure our clone was successful. Have pretty good luck with that Samsung data migration software. It's free. I'll have the link down below so you can go download it. It's easy to find on their website. I am going to put these battery screws back in. Because I think we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so we got those screws back in. I'm gonna pop Mr. Battery in. And I might as well put this goofy guy back in. <laughs> Our fake optical drive. Put that last small screw in right here. I apologize if I sniff unconsciously, guys. I've had the sniffles for the last quite a while, actually. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these screws back in under here because, like I said, I'm pretty sure we're going to be fine with our clone on this. I just need to get this done so I can do another one. And another one. And another one. Ugh. But going from a slow hard drive to a SATA SSD, even though it's SATA, it's a huge difference in basic performance, boot up time, that kind of stuff. So I get all these screws back in now. And again, I'm using my number zero Phillips screwdriver here. Don't want to mess up the heads of your screws because that can be very frustrating. All right, put Mr. Keyboard back in, same way. Lay it down. These are even marked. This side up. Slide it in there evenly. Clip it down. Oh shoot, I'm getting in a hurry here. Ugh. All right, we got that back in. I'm such an idiot sometimes. Dale. Take Mr. Pretend CD-ROM drive out. I didn't put these guys back in. Gotta have those. <laughs> Tell you not to forget to do it, but I forgot. These are so tiny. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have a good clone, so I'm kind of putting these screws back in just to get it done. Try this again. All right, we got, okay, so I'm gonna wait on these other screws just in case. Even just to do the RAM, you have to do all that to get to them RAM slots. All right, so we're gonna boot it up, turn it on for the first time. I think the battery's pretty much fully charged. We'll see. Might even do a little scanning of the drive after a clone. Sometimes it does, sometimes Windows does or doesn't. We'll see. Chris swore this only had four gigabytes of memory in it though. So that's good. Hey, it booted up. That was a lot quicker. So it looks like we got a good clone, guys. Like I said, check out some more of my videos that I do cloning stuff. That'd be great. Don't forget to smash that uh, subscribe button and the like button. That would be awesome. And when you're all done, you can uninstall your cloning software. In this case, Samsung Data Migration. It's free. We'll get it off the computer. Don't need it anymore. And I got to do some updates and some quick tuning up stuff on this for the customer. Appreciate you all watching. Have a great day.